Welcome to the Advertising Forum. We're on episode three of our privacy series, brought to you by Mozilla. Robin Shore is a leader in TikTok's product partnerships group. He and his team are responsible for fostering an ecosystem of third-party data and measurement partners who help create confidence in the eyes of advertisers that TikTok is safe, effective, and efficient as a platform. He's been with TikTok for three years and is based in Brooklyn, New York. Robin, thanks for joining us today. Welcome to the Advertising Forum. ATG, Jeremy, thanks so much for having me. Huge fan, so uh, it's an honor to be here. I am also a huge fan of TikTok, and I'm, I'm excited that you're here. We really jump into it on the Advertising Forum. So our first question to you is, you know, how does TikTok see advertisers adapting to ensure they can continue to drive marketing performance in an uncertain advertising landscape? Yeah, I, I think this is something that has been a trend for uh, several years. Uh, uh, as, as the industry is constantly evolving, uh, marketers have to adapt, right? And uh, I think a couple areas that we see this most frequently from like the strongest advertisers uh, would be in creating a strong foundation in first party data, of course. Uh, and the second is increasingly adopting a bit more of a, a nuanced approach to measurement, uh, kind of test and learn mentality. So if we think about uh, the, the, the first party data perspective, um, increasingly with uh, changes to our industry, uh, this is something that uh, has become more and more important, right? Um, that, that signal that ultimately powers a lot of the uh, uh, targeting, optimization, and measurement. Um, and really, by investing heavily in the resources to have practice strong data hygiene as a marketer, um, you help prepare yourself for the future. I wouldn't go as far to say that it's future-proofing because no one knows what the future is. Uh, but, but ultimately, by, by creating that strong foundation of first-party data, whether that's cleaning up your own house and your own data, disparate sources, databases, um, bringing in talent uh, internally or working with your partners uh, to support that as well, um, uh, I, I, think, I think that's uh, increasingly important and, frankly, just uh, will lead to a very successful uh, endeavors across the board in light of all these changes um, uh, that are constantly kind of evolving. And on the second hand, uh, we've got measurement, like I mentioned. Uh, so increasingly, we're seeing that marketers are really um, moving beyond some of the legacy uh, uh, measurement methodologies like last click attribution, which are great for certain channels, but uh, frankly, undervalue or, or don't provide the full picture for a lot of full funnel marketing channels. Um, we're, we're seeing movement away from that and embracing more uh, uh, novel uh, types of measurement, whether that be marketing mix modeling, incrementality, and uh, you know, lift measurement or more data-driven advanced attribution solutions uh, in general. So I think when you, you know, uh, look at all the changes that are, that are constantly facing um, our industry, there's this responsibility on the marketer uh, to do this. And, and like I said, the, the, the ones who are succeeding the most uh, are, are taking that strong approach to first-party data uh, and uh, a test and learn mentality to uh, new measurement solutions. You know, Robin, you've, you've been with the company for three years now. Where do you see TikTok investments in various solutions to these advertisers? Like, where do you see the investment and how is the platform able to help them serve the right ad to the right user at the right time? Yeah, I, I think, like I said, if, if the responsibility for the advertiser is, is in showing up their, their data, creating that strong foundation, like I said, um, it's the platform's responsibility. It's TikTok's responsibility to make sure that uh, we can make the most of that data. Um, once, once it is in, in, in the right uh, uh, place. So uh, the two things to highlight here really that we've been making huge investments in is our first party conversion lift studies uh, as well as data connections. So conversion lift studies or CLS, um, it's kind of a, a tried and true method for proving that uh, uh, a platform truly is uh, incremental from a performance lens. That conversions that have happened would not have happened uh, without that touch point, Right. And this creates that, that confidence and trust, right? And this is what um, uh, me and the team and, and our ecosystem of partners really are responsible for is helping marketers feel very confident uh, that TikTok is effective. And so our conversion lift studies uh, are able to do just that. So once you have that strong uh, conversion data, uh, you're able to pass it to TikTok and um, you know, through control and exposed treatments, we're able to produce this report that says that, you know, uh, yes, uh, this truly was uh, incremental. This truly was, uh, there was lift observed for this campaign uh, in your conversions. But the next question is, well, all right, you have this great data. 
you want to have a conversion lift study, how do you pass it to TikTok, right? And that's where our data connectors come into play. Again, we've been investing heavily in these data connectors. Um, examples there are our events API, uh, what a lot of other platforms call conversions API or CAPI, um, as well as, of course, the TikTok pixel, and then partners in the ecosystem who help facilitate these connections as well. So, uh, you know, I, I, we spoke about you know, the oil that is first party data, that is conversion data, that signal that helps power the engine uh, of TikTok to our target ads, optimize and measure. Um, well, ultimately, these data connectors, um, Events API and Pixel and others, are, are, are critical for helping feed that engine and really drive those strong results. So like I said, there's a huge responsibility for us to mirror the effort that advertisers are doing. And I think, um, uh, you know, we've made some really, really great strides uh, from a measurement lens as well as connection lens. Okay. So with that then, Robin, help us understand how is TikTok building solutions for advertisers who are reconsidering the ways in which they share data with platforms? Right. Um, so let's say you have that uh, strong first party data. It's organized in an appropriate way. Um, uh, and you're eager to make sure that TikTok can accurately report uh, or optimize against that data, right? Um, and so you want to make use of one of the available connections that I, that I just mentioned. For some marketers, uh, particularly in certain regulated industries, let's say like finance, for example, there are additional uh, requirements or protections that have to be had above and beyond um, uh, you know, the, the standard encryption that might be, uh, you know, present in these data connectors. And, uh, that's where our investments in privacy enhancing technology over the last couple of years have helped make that possible so that the marketer who has that strong data, but has to apply additional protections to it doesn't feel left out. We want to make sure that we meet marketers where they are, right? So, uh, if you're a marketer who can make use of our conversions API, great. Um, if you have to do that through uh, a privacy enhancing technology layer between, we want to make sure that we can facilitate that. Um, and so we've been investing heavily in our own uh, multi-party computation, uh, as well as uh, standing up clean rooms and trusted execution environments. Uh, Anonym, uh, Mozilla company is, is one of those uh, trusted execution environments that uh, has been such a strong partner for a while now um, and really helps marketers who have those specific needs um, uh, facilitate the right measurement in a, uh, a protected environment. So we want to make sure that we can produce those conversion lift studies, like I mentioned, and that's what exactly what we're doing in these uh, in these protected environments, in a, a trusted execution environment that that Anonym has, uh, in addition to uh, uh, some other partners as well. So it's been a huge investment, and um, uh, ultimately we want to make sure that that marketers, no matter how they're uh, perceiving the flow of data have a chance to uh, work with TikTok. It's awesome that you just mentioned Anonym uh, in, our, in our final episode that we're going to be airing next week. We feature Brad Smallwood, who is the, the founder of Anonym, uh, who's going to be talking about it and what, what he's building at Mozilla. That's great. So thank you for mentioning that. That was organic and, and perfect. But uh, help us understand, you had mentioned uh, from a marketer's lens and just when we were talking about how TikTok is building solutions for, for advertisers and marketers to reconsider how they're um, sharing data with the platforms. Help us understand what the biggest challenges are specifically when implementing these privacy-preserving solutions on a platform like TikTok. There has to be some challenges that that, um, that we can just showcase of, of how you're tackling these challenges. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, you know, the, the subject of privacy-enhancing tech, clean rooms, you know, we, we've been in the industry for a bit. We've been hearing about this for years, right? So you, yeah. you think that there might be uh, a mass adoption of this, but really it, um, it's important to recognize that uh, these are solutions that are relevant for only certain types of advertisers, right? Um, and as a result, you have to really understand what are some of the trade-offs associated with that, if there, if there are any. Um, uh, but working backwards from from the goal of having a strong understanding of a uh, platform's performance and, and, and hopefully you can kind of conquer some of these challenges that that are present or work with a partner who can help do that too. I really see two uh, common themes here when it comes to the challenges with enabling uh, this, the, the, the flowing of data through uh, privacy enhancing tech. Um, usually it's around resources. So that's data science, engineering resources, and time, frankly. Um, with cleaner technology, um, you know, as long as all three parties are uh, agreeing on what 
uh, can be queried for what purposes. The options are kind of limitless, really, with um, uh, with with what you can do with uh, the data in an aggregated, privacy, uh, uh, secure way, right? And so, for data scientists and researchers and engineers, that's like super exciting. But right. it can often lead to uh, overly customized uh, types of um, uh, queries or, or or analyses, or even some type of like decision paralysis. And so. Uh, Anonym again uh, is a great example of someone who's who's created these templatized queries, uh, which means that this is a pre-approved, off-the-shelf uh, type of analysis that can be performed in their trusted execution environment. Uh, that uh, uh, everyone has has agreed on. All, all three parties in the chain have agreed on: advertiser, publisher, uh, and anonym as well, so that you don't need to have data science or engineers kind of writing custom SQL. Um, and so it's a really good fit for folks who want to get started quickly. And we're seeing that that, uh, increasingly, uh, with, with the adoption of templates and this is something that, you know, me and the team are encouraging the wider industry to work towards, uh, that with that, th- some, some of those issues are, are diminished. And also, you know, once you do get started, once you go from zero to one, um, measuring a campaign, doing that conversion with study in, 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 uh, in a secure environment, um, the subsequent studies also get faster and faster. So ultimately, there are some challenges there, um, but I see them improving, and uh, I, I think the future's bright. Robin, we think the future's bright too. This has been great. Uh, thank you for your insights. Thank you just for uh, explaining how j- what you and your team are working on at TikTok. This has been uh, fantastic. ETG to you. Yeah, thank you for being here, and thank you again to Mozilla for sponsoring the series. Join us for our final episode featuring Brad Smallwood of Mozilla coming out next week. I appreciate you being here, Robin. And thank you to TikTok for having you as our guest. Thanks so much for having me. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah.